Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. We're gonna to be talking about chicken anatomy and everything you need to know about chickens as far as their organs go and how their reproductive organs work and all that good stuff. Before we get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description below, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So chicken anatomy is a a huge subject to cover in one video so i've really pared it down to the basics just for ease of understanding the references provided will give you greater in-depth knowledge if you want to delve further into chicken anatomy so the topics or the areas we'll cover today are feathers and skin, the digestive system, the bones, legs, and wings, and the reproductive system. That should keep us busy for a while. So understanding the basic anatomy of the chicken will help you see just how different and similar the chicken is to us humans. While many of the basic structures are comparable to things we see in humans, such as the skeleton, there are some notable differences too, such as the ability to fly. I find this a fascinating topic, so I hope you do too. All right, so let's start off with chicken anatomy of the feathers and skin. So chicken feathers, birds are unique in many ways. One of them being feathered. The feathers serve several different functions, all of them vital to the bird's health and well-being. Without feathers, birds cannot fly. Of course, many of our chicken friends do a poor job of flying anyway, but the feathers do provide them with enough lift to fly a short distance out of harm's way. Feathers also provide warmth in the cooler months, cool the birds in warmer months, and provide protection from the elements. They also provide camouflage and courtship colors. Once they are one year old, chickens molt their feathers once a year in some species of birds. A complete molt may take much longer. The average chicken will complete a molt in between seven or eight to 12 weeks. Some birds of prey will start molting in the spring and finish in the fall. The new feathers start growing in the follicle, gradually pushing the old feather out until it drops or is molted. You will see that your hen now looks a bit like a hedgehog or porcupine with short quills instead of feathers. These quills are very sensitive to touch because they contain nerve and blood supply at this time. So try to avoid touching the bird if possible. If you want to learn more about the feathers, we have an article, it's called The Miracle of Chicken Feathers. I'll link to that in the description. Now let's talk about chicken skin. Skin covers almost the entire body of the bird and has several vital functions. It acts as a protective barrier for the bird and acts as an insulating layer in conjunction with the feathers. It monitors sensory input like feeling heat or cold or pain or pleasure and special compounds within the skin convert sunlight to vitamin D. There are several different types of skin on a chicken. Each type has been modified to perform certain functions. So let's go through these types of skin. Feathered skin. We often say birds are covered in feathers. To our eyes they are, but feathers grow in distinct pathways from the bird's skin. Feathers erupt from follicles in the skin pathways. Also scaled skin. This covers the leg and feet and is thought to be vestigial from the dinosaur age. It also provides protection from the legs. Now let's talk about the beak and toenails. Made from hardened keratin, each serves a special or particular function, as well as their foot pad skin. This area is the base of the foot and therefore much tougher and thicker and flexible than other areas. And lastly, the skin on the comb and wattles. These are secondary sexual appendages initially produced by the sex hormones when the bird starts to mature. There's something called a uropygial gland at the base of the tail. It is more commonly called the preen gland. Birds use the oily extract from this gland to keep the feathers oiled and in good condition. The leg scales help to protect the underlying tissue while the claws or toenails scratch at the ground to turn up tasty morsels like seeds and bugs. This scratching helps keep the nails short. You may notice in other birds that don't scratch much, the nails get quite long and will need to be trimmed occasionally. The beak is hard when used as a weapon can be formidable. If you ever had a well-aimed peck from a broody hen, you'll know just how damaging that beak can be. The beak is kept in good shape by probing and wiping the food residue on stones, etc. Now let's talk about the digestive system. The digestive system of the bird has some distinct differences from our human system, although the end product is the same. Chickens have a beak, no teeth. The beak can peck at and break up larger particles of food so they are small enough to swallow. Have you ever wondered why chickens run when they find a mouse or snake? It is thought that the object is too large to swallow. The birds run with the food. Others will follow, grab at the food, and tear it apart into bite-sized pieces. Sorry if you were eating when you were hearing this. Once the morsels have been swallowed, it travels into the crop, an expandable storage area, then the proventriculus, where it awaits 
its turn into the gizzard. So why do birds have a crop? Chickens are prey creatures. They evolved to be able to ingest a lot of food at once and are able to store it just in case they needed to fly away from danger. The stomach is the area where the digestion of the food starts. Enzymes are added to soften the food prior to the entrance into the gizzard. The gizzard is a very muscular portion of the digestive tract where the bird stores grit and small stones for grinding its food into a paste. Once ground, the food paste now moves along the intestines or various proteins and enzymes dissolve the food, removing all nutrients. These enzymes are supplied by the gut itself, pancreas, and liver in much the same way as human digestion. Once past the gizzard, the food travels down the small and large intestine and the cecum. The two cecum are actually blind tubes whose function is reabsorption of water and fermentation of the coarser matter. This is where the really smelly chicken poop comes from. In a young bird, the passage of food through the system usually takes around four hours in a laying hen. It's about eight hours in a broody, 12 hours. Now you know why broody poops smell so vile. Onward to the cloaca or vent, the exit ramp of the intestinal throughway. In the cloaca, the urinary excrement is added to the waste, giving the bird poop the characteristic of a white covering of urate. All right, and now let's wrap up with the chicken anatomy of bone, legs, and wings. Bird bones are composed mainly of calcium and phosphorus and a fine web of collagen fibers that are bound tightly together. The skeleton provides support and protection much as this human skeleton does. 99% of calcium and 80% phosphorus are stored in the bones. Vitamin D, which we mentioned earlier, is vital for the conversion of these minerals to a usable state for the bird. The deficiency of calcium in the diet will lead to soft or no eggshells. In severe cases, laying will stop. In caged layers, this can be manifested as cage layer fatigue, leading to osteoporosis and muscular paralysis. This can be reversed if the bird is placed on the ground and given dietary calcium. This is usually only seen in high production industrial birds, the bones of birds can be broadly split into two different types. First type, pneumatic. These bones are hollow and connected to the respiratory system by way of air sacs. The skull, humerus, pelvis, and collarbones are examples. And then the second type of bone is medullary. These bones store calcium in the centers of these bones is bone marrow, which make blood cells. Legs, shoulder blades, and ribs are examples of this type. The neck and the backbone of the chicken are very flexible. The spine contains 39 bones with the neck being quite long. This acts as a shock absorber to the skull and also allows the bird great range when searching for food. A bird can turn its head 180 degrees. The sternum is the largest bone in a bird's body. It covers fully half of the bird's cavity. The sternum forms a keel which you can feel when you pick up the bird. The wings are attached to the sternum by very strong muscles. Once upon a time, the domestic chicken could fly much better than it currently does. The ancestors of modern chickens were much better at short bursts of flight in order to escape danger. Mankind has selectively bred chickens for hundreds of years now. Through this process, the chicken's flight ability has diminished tremendously. Although the skeletal structure has remained the same, the muscles are no longer capable of lifting the bird off the ground as they once were. The leg of the chicken is similar to the human anatomy, except that the hip bone is fused with the backbone. This provides a strong and rigid union in conjunction with powerful muscles. Oh, and I messed up. There is one more system to talk about, the reproductive system. We've covered much of the hen's reproductive system before on our website, but we're going to do a brief review here to refresh memories. So why do birds lay eggs? Birds are prey low on the totem pole of life. Having to carry young in pregnancy would severely affect their ability to avoid capture or being eaten. So they lay eggs instead. The egg contains all nutrition a developing chick needs, and if necessary, the mother can leave the nest and fly to safety. Eggs are usually laid in a clutch of several eggs. This helps to ensure the continuation of the species, the theory being that some will hatch and survive. Chicken offspring are precocious, meaning that they are well-developed at hatching, able to walk and stand. This also means the mother has to spend less time I'm tending to them. We already know that a chicken will lay an egg roughly every day, but nothing will come of the egg unless it is fertilized by the rooster. You may remember from our previous articles that a hen is born with a predetermined number of eggs and only has one functional ovary. By contrast, the rooster has two fully functional testes that produce sperm on a continual basis during his lifetime. After mating, the sperm of the rooster can either be kept in the little sperm pockets in the hen's oviduct, or if she decides she didn't like the rooster, she can expel the sperm. If she decides to keep the sperm, it will stay viable for around 30 days inside the pockets. The sperm will then fertilize an egg or eggs. The hen will then lay the fertilized egg, and if she decides to become broody, she will gather several eggs into a nest and sit on them until they hatch. So to summarize, that was a lightning tour of our chicken anatomy.
As I mentioned earlier, a close and in-depth video would run several minutes in length longer than this and probably bore you to death. So I hope I've distilled enough information for you to find useful. And if you remain curious, check out the links that I talked about. I'll be doing more installments of Chicken Anatomy, so keep your eyes open. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.